Hello again, first graders. It's Miss Boyle. Last week, last time I told you about the flaming high fives, and then I forgot to have us do a flaming high five. So before I forget, let's give you a flaming high five because you came back for video number two of this week, and that is fantastic. Your hands are getting really, really hot, and high five. Nice job, first graders. All right. I'm sure you came back not just for the flaming high five, but also so that we could continue reading birds and we could continue to wonder about the book. There we go. All right. So to review, we did the first four chapters last time. Just to give us, we learned a world full of animals and what was important about birds. And we did feathers and wings. I want you to see, do you remember anything from this page about feathers and wings? I want you to think, what do you remember about this page, feathers and wings? Mm. All right. Bones and blood. I want you to turn and tell whoever's next to you, remember it can be that grown up, can be that kid, that brother or sister, that animal, that pet, or it can be a stuffed animal or an imaginary friend. What did we learn about bones and blood last time you watched the video. I remember, right? We had we saw this picture right here. That was very interesting that they were full of holes. Their bones are full of holes. Very interesting. And then we also read beginning as an egg. What do you remember about this page? Right? It talked about the different things that bird nests were made out of. Okay, we had lots of good wonderings. So in here, we have our wonderings that we wrote down together. So we're going to continue reading. We're going to continue wondering. We're going to continue learning. We're going to be continuing asking questions. Let's go on to the next chapter, which is home sweet home. Birds live in different habitats all around the world. Many birds, such as colorful macaws and parrots, live in warm, sunny places. So this is an Amazon parrot, and that's a macaw. Macaws are really pretty, aren't they? The hot, dry desert is home to the singing cactus wren. Large roadrunners also love to sprint across the desert. Sprint means to run really fast. To sprint across the desert sand at speeds of about 17 miles per hour. That is pretty fast. That's faster than I could sprint, that's for sure. So there's the cactus wren and there's the roadrunner. Perching and water birds. So perching, perch means to like go onto a branch. So this type of birds, the perching birds are the ones that live in trees that perch on branches. Perch is kind of when you sit with your, uh, with your claws like that. Perching and water birds. Robins, cardinals, and other perching birds live in woodlands and gardens. These birds have four strong toes that grip branches tightly, right, for that perching. A perching bird does not fall off a branch when it sleeps because its toes keep sweet squeezing as it snoozes. So, yeah, if we had to sit on a branch and fall asleep, we might fall out, but they get to stay on. They keep perching. So we've got cardinals, robins. Those are robins. Oh, and look. So cool. I love that the illustrator Kirsten, Kristen Kentz did, Kess did this. You can really see. So there, it's really grabbing on. It's perching. It's grabbing onto that tree branch with that zoom in. Water birds live near lakes, rivers, and oceans. Most are graceful swimmers as well as strong flyers. Ducks, swans, and geese use their webbed feet to paddle on the water. Storks and flamingos have long stick-like legs. They wade in shallow water and search for food. So there's a wood duck and a mallard duck and a flamingo. It says water birds have oil on their feathers to keep them dry. These waterproof feathers also help water birds stay warm. I've seen that before. Like, have you seen a duck in the water and like it splashes? And like, for some reason when they get in the water, they don't get wet, like the water just kind of like beads and then like rolls right off their feathers. I guess it's because of those oils. And there's another great zoom in showing that they're webbed feet. So look, you can really see the difference between the perching birds and the wading birds. And you can see like these are good for grabbing onto tree branches and these are good for swimming and walking around on um, in the water. So what did we learn about the birds habitats or the places that they live? So we kind of talked like what, how does that, what's the connection between where a bird lives and like what they look like? Hmm. I want you to go ahead and talk to your partner, whoever that is. What did, what did we learn about their habitats? 
Yeah. I kind of like, it depends. Like, would this bird do a very good job walking around in this water? Well, their claws would get all stuck. But then again, would a bird with a duck do a very good job perching in a tree? I don't think so. So their habitats are connected to the features that the birds have. Pretty cool. Hungry birds. Birds that hunt and kill other animals are food, or sorry, birds that hunt and kill other animals for food are called predators. Eagles and owls are predators. They have good eyesight and sharp claws to catch their prey. Vultures and other scavenger birds eat dead animals. Scavengers use their sense of smell to find food. So there, that's a golden eagle. And there you can see, uh-oh, I'm worried about that rabbit. Many birds, such as peacocks and chickens, eat seeds and fruit. Some birds dine on insects and worms. That's what they eat. Birds use their hard beaks to crack open seeds and nuts. They can't chew their food because they don't have teeth. Instead, birds swallow their food whole. So, what did we learn about what birds eat? Learned a couple of different things. Go ahead and tell your partner. So we learned like that some birds eat seeds, some birds eat live animals, right? Next chapter, flightless birds. Oh, I think we know a little bit about flightless birds. There's the pictures. All birds have wings. We learned that at the beginning, that they have to have wings. But not all birds can fly. Flightless birds have other ways of getting around. So flightless means that they can't fly. Like less means you can't do it. So flightless, no flying. Uh, flightless birds have other ways of getting around. With their short legs, penguins waddle slowly across surfaces. In water, their wings work like flippers to help them swim best, fast. So these are emperor penguins. Have you ever seen them? They look really awkward on land waddling around, but when they're in the water, they swim with their like, looks like flying almost because they are able to use their, their uh, wings as flippers. Ostriches and emus have long, strong legs for running. An ostrich can run as fast as 43 miles per hour. That is very fast. So these are ostriches. The dodo bird once lived on the island of Meritius, but it was extinct by 1681. It had a chubby gray body and short legs. Although it had wings, it didn't use them to fly. It is known for its funny name and hooked beak. So there was another flightless bird called the dodo that lived that is not living anymore. Oh, this is the chapter I was wondering about because this is the chapter of strange birds. Swifts spend most of their lives in the air. They eat, mate, and even sleep while flying. Think of that. That would be like you always running. Like if you never stopped running, if you ate running, and if you slept running, and all everything you did was while running. That's kind of crazy. Bee eaters have an unusual diet. They often munch on bees and wasps. So there's a bee eater eating a bee. Hmm. I guess that's a good name for them. Hummingbirds are amazing flyers. Hummingbirds are beautiful, but I can also see why they're strange. Hummingbirds are amazing flyers. They can hover in one place and fly backward. So those are hummingbirds and you can see, and they can move their wings so fast that they can stay in one place. Birds called cuckoos are not crazy, but they are pushy. Mom cuckoos lay their eggs in other birds' nests. Once the young cuckoos hatch, they shove the other young birds out of their nests. It's about the cuckoo bird. That is pretty crazy. That is pretty strange that they, uh, they shove other birds out. All right, so we finished all the chapters of this book. Nice job. So let's think about what was surprising about what we learned. So we learned a bunch of things about birds. What was the most surprising or the most interesting thing you think? I want you to think of it. And then I want you to tell your partner, what did you find surprising or interesting? All right, did you share? Yeah, okay, cool. Um, I wanna share what I found interesting. Um, let's see, what did I find interesting? I thought it was really interesting that um, 
about the bee, key, the bee eater, that there's birds that eat bees. Didn't think that they anybody would really want to be eat bird. I think, yeah, I just found all the strange bird chapters were pretty good. The swifts that don't ever really land, but they do all their stuff while they're uh, while they're flying. I found that interesting and surprising. So those are the things that I thought about as I was reading, because that's what good readers do. They think about what they learned. Also, of course, is going back to our wonderings, because good readers wonder. And let's talk about our wondering. So here were some of the wonderings we had. Do all birds come from eggs? Can all birds fly? What makes birds strange? And how do they build nests? Those are some of the wonderings. So we uh, we talked, let's go to can all birds fly? That was one of our wonderings. And it was in one of the chapters that, no, not all birds can fly because these are flightless birds. So we had a wondering and we were able to answer it. But I also wondered, I wanted to know how they build the nest. Like, how do they know how to build them? They have the materials, but how do they do that? How do they know how? And this book didn't talk about it, but it's still a great wondering. And I can go and I can read another book about birds, and maybe that book will help answer some of my other wonderings. But as long as I'm doing wondering, I'm doing what good readers do. All right, so we're gonna go to our writing part for today. And you might have a piece of paper that looks like this. Again, if you don't have a piece of paper, it is a blank piece of paper. So here is our wondering for Wednesday. And the direction says, after reading the book, write what did you what you learned that surprised you and what are you still wondering about? So we talked about those two things. We did that with this book here. So I want you to write while you're reading, after or sorry, after you're reading, you're gonna write what surprised you and what are you still wondering about? So this is when you get 15 minutes of reading time. When you're setting that timer, you're picking a book that you're interested in and you're spending 15 minutes of reading time. And then you're gonna go grab this or a piece of paper and you're going to write what did you learn that surprised you and what are you still wondering about? So please right now, go get that book, go start the reading and then don't forget to watch the last video of this week. That will also be me, and it'll be our last one together. Till then, enjoy your book. Stay safe.